let's let's record where we are. So uh, we wish to prove this uh, this special case of uh, multiple term. S is S S V R. Gamma is a lattice, and we are all having rho from gamma to G, which is some simple and complex algebraic P G let's say. Unknown n. You, you may think of it as a, an unknown group. It is of course very in more generality. Uh, somehow, given any non-compact other T in S, think of it as acting on the other side. And S as a space X, considering gamma times T action on X, we may consider, given that row, all these by actions, uh, I'm sorry, by representation of gamma times T on X. Uh, and this requires having some arbitrary guy L and arbitrary G times L representation of variety and representing X into it. T is arbitrary. In what follows, T will be, we'll consider these six options of T. Those unipotent group, which I remind you, commute with in pairs uh, inside S. These will be the companions of gamma. So I will change them from uh, time to time. I will be allow myself to, to change the perspective. Somehow, I want to see S on the other side of gamma. But I can't see S because somehow what will get me started is this availability that I will point out again in some point. The companion of gamma, in order to get started, in order to get some non-triviality, of the representation theory of gamma times something on X, I would need that something to be amenable. This is why I, this is why I will take T, T1, say. I want S there, S is not amenable, I will take T1. How to approach S? I will not be able to approach S. I will be able to approach T2. T2 commutes with T1. So I will replace T1 by T2 using the commutation. I will replace T2 by T3 using the computation. I will replace, re replace T3 by T4 using the computation. I will re replace T4 using T5 using the computation, and so on and so forth, until I will replace T5 with T6. And, uh, and together, they will uh, see all of this, right? So what comes next is indeed to explain how to use commutation. And this is related to something which I didn't use, but I did point out yesterday, that whenever I have an, a, the universal property of initial object in a category gives us not only a map from X to G mod H, but also a map from the commutation, the commutant of the acting group on X, automorphism group, the gamma automorphism group, of X in, of, I think it was the S automorphism group of X in terminology of yesterday, to the G automorphism group of G mod H. Again, this was in, in, in terminology of yesterday. I will now write a version of it for, uh, in terminology of us today, but again, I will not do it in the most general form. Let me recall our specific thing. So let me now take this theorem, apply it for these TIs and uh, put it on the board. So fix uh, for the gamma times. Now I'm writing something that I will do for any i, one to six. Uh, an initial object. Uh, and it will be X with Pi to G mod Hi. Here I'm having gamma times Pi X. X is S. And here I will have G coming with this uh, initial object, some group L. This is rho times some theta I, which comes with this. And Li here is actually sum of N. And I mod Hi, 
Well, Ni is defined to be the normalizer in G of Hi mod. Sorry. Okay, each specific sum of T gives specific choice of emission objects. Right? Uh, so this, so we, we fix those. I want to, uh, initial object, let me remind you, is not a canonical in some way. It is unique up to unique as a morphism. I'm making a choice here of representation. Uh, and now, observe, as we had before, that uh, gamma times T1 times T2, we have a triply commuting action on X. Gamma act on the left on S, T1 act and T2 act on the right on S, and they do commute between themselves. So this is a very special situation. You don't see this a lot of in mathematics. And three groups do it. Uh, oh, maybe I, I, I should have had one more line here. We know. Uh, we know this is the content of that. This is why I kept this unclean. We know that the HIs are proper subjects of G. This is the idea. We worked hard for this. Those categories are not trivial. And this is, for this it was enough to consider the trivial representation of T1, T2. Okay. Uh, and now, let's consider, not the full book, T2, but one element. And uh, let's look at uh, phi one. And let me not again write too many symbols. Uh, those, this arrow is uh, decorated with more uh, symbols around it. Let me uh, be uh, Hassan. Let me say chief. Uh, okay. And now let's let me take T two and think of it as an automorphism of the gamma times T1. I should emphasize this. This is an automorphism, a grand map, of the gamma times uh, T1 space X. And let me apply it again, apply again, the same gate map, phi one And that theorem, in the background of it, using big, weak mixing, etc., gives me the existence of this arrow. And this arrow here depends on T2. Let me use a symbol which I haven't yet. Let me call it theta prime 2 of T2 to show the dependence in T2. And check as you you did before that theta 2 is a map from T2 to the automorphism of this thing. So uh, here you have an action of G times L1. And this, this should be equivalent with respect to this action. In particular, it is G equivalent. This will be a map into the automorphism of G mod H1 commuting with G. It will be a map into, um, into N1 mod H1. Actually into the contact of, in, in, sorry, the centralizer of L1. But never mind that. Uh, and of course I will denote uh, the Zarisky closure of it by M Make the 
following observation. That map x to g mod h1, that very p1, when I consider x at, as a gamma times t2 space, and this one as g times l2 pi space, is a bilayer of, again, gamma times t2 acting on x. So the, the initial t1 object is a t2 object. And here I was using heavily commutation. Consider the category of all T2 bilabs, or gamma times T2 bilabs of X, uh, and the fact that, and initiality in it, this is the initial object in that category. So it's again T2. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. Let me. Uh, There is such a map uh, due to, or maybe, a morphism. This is a short annotation for a morphism of gamma times T2 by length. In particular, this is a morphism of this. This is a g-morphism of, of this variety. But it has much more structure. I don't care. Again, the, due to the fact that this is initial in that category. OK? Fine. But the role of 1 and 2 is symmetric, right? I didn't do any property of T1 that was not the property. I mean, I can invert the role of T1 and T2. Symmetrically, I can find a map g mod h1 to g mod h2. It would be a morphism in the gamma times t1. It would be a homomorphism. So a morphism of gamma times t2, gamma times t1 representation. So forget this. This is a g morphism. This one and that one are g morphisms of opposite space. We get the g mod h1 and g mod h2 isomorphic g spaces. Right? This is not trivial. A minute ago, I was introducing all these initial objects. A minute ago, they were all different. But now it seems that all the phi i's are just the same up. All the h i's are just the same group. Some things are different. The L's are, the L I, I'm not saying they are the same. But those spaces, when I vary, are just the same space. This map, if you think about it, is the same map all over again. So, let me uh, state this. Okay, I'm going to maybe actually. It's not that G mod H2 is G mod H1. It's not that H2 is H1. It's up to a certain conjugation that they should form. Let's choose this conjugation. Let's maybe, so in that sense, maybe we change our, our choice here. We change, we change the choice of H2 to be the same as the choice of H1. We conjugate things so that without those generality, when we made these choices, we had all the ages are the same. All the fields are the same. And let me 
i is again, because this is so important. Uh, I'm having gamma times the i. For each i, I'm having this action on x or on s. And I'm having this map, same map, phi to g mod h. The li's are all different. But all the li's are subject of the same n mod h. So we have S 
goes to G, this will not fit. It's not a homophism of group. If it was a homophism of group already, I was happier. This is uh, just a Borel map with, with, from this measurable space, measured space, to that Borel space. But it has a lot of equivariance property. Somehow, now, I want to glue all these equivariance properties together. So far, but I know separately that it commutes with all these Li's. I mean, it's going to all the TIs, but this might, this commutation might, might be different from group to group. This, somehow I want to glue all these, all these TIs generate S, the right action of S. All the LIs, now I know that the LIs are actually subgroups of G. I know subgroups. It was in N mod H. N is G, H is um, Somehow, I, I want to say, I want to glue together all these maps that are into one map from the group generated by TI, by the TIs, in the group generated by the allies, or in, in the global uh, envelope of them, into G. This is what is left to establish. So somehow I want, I want to say, hey, this, the TI action, actually, I can actually see it here, and it, it, it extends into the NS action here. But I, know, I don't know that the TI, they do act here. I don't know that they generate S in here. Right? Maybe they generate something else in here. I don't know that the, the, those homomorphism TI do extend to a global homomorphism from S. So this is my next point. It's, it will be slightly technical. I will use a nice trick of Instead of looking at spaces, I will look at function spaces on them once more. So this is just a trick to, to get to glue together those maps. So uh, maybe let, let me just summarize some before doing this. Let me uh, note some uh, uh, fact. Look at phi of s, the image of s inside here. Some of the way I want to think about it, uh, phi is. It's just, it's, it's not really a function, it's defined almost everywhere. What is well defined is the push forward of the measure class from here. Here I have a measure, I can push that measure in here. This is a measure in here. So if, when I write this, think of it as a measure. Take the support of that measure. This is. Since everything was gamma equivariant, this is a raw gamma invariant set, closed set in here. Take the closure of the support. This will be invariant set. How many invariants have you reached? This means now that the support is actually is a risky depth inside you. Well, I don't understand something. Maybe you could have a file which is an almost everywhere defined function from S to G. What is support of phi of X? Is it a subset of G? So, um, this is a short term notation. Actually, I'm having a measure here. And I'm pushing this into phi star. Oh, right. You, and if you want, this is phi star. Okay. Okay? But I, I use the symbol that I'm using. Probably I will not use this again in this course, but uh, I, uh, I, I'm using many times. So it's, in some sense, the spaces, the depth spaces I'm considering are just measures. So when I, uh, for me, S is a measure. Now, in my, in my mind. Okay. Um, so now the image actually, and I, actually it means that whenever, whatever null set you ignore here, you define the phi on the rest, the image will be the risky dense. There is no null set which is heavy enough that you can ignore it and the image will be 
support the nonsense model. The image will be uh, in some uh, strictly algebraic closed, very thick closed set. Okay. And now, as I said earlier, I want to consider the effect of phi on function spaces. So consider OG. What, are, what is OG? Polynomials on the affine variety G. I can pull back polynomials by recomposing with phi and think of them as functions measurable only, Lebesgue functions on S. So these are functions measurably almost everywhere defined functions, consider up to null set, blah, 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 complex value on S. Right? The fact that I was emphasizing here is that this is injective. I want to explain, this is a home office of algebras, as usual when, you, when I apply a set map into function spaces. It's the homomorphism of algebra, so how does that uh, And if you take a polynomial, I want to show that it cannot be mapped to a non trivial a, a polynomial which is not a zero polynomial here, cannot be mapped to zero here. So it's not zero almost everywhere. The well, the space, or the set on which is not zero is an open density. It is an open set here. It's a risky open set. And the measure sees that set. So the image is not zero. So this means that this map is injective. So in my mind, I'm considering O at G now as a subalgebra. Of LS. Don't get mad. Don't get mad on me on doing it. If you if you don't like it, write V upper star here. Consider the image. But, uh, but now, here I'm having again, uh, here I'm having Ni, oh, G times Ni active. Here I'm having gamma times Ti active. These maps are, this map is equivalent, right, with respect to each uh, uh, all times theta i. But now I may think of this OG considered as subalgebra for LS is TI invariant for all I. Do you agree? Now, I can glue together all the action ends. It is invariant than the group generated by the TIs that is S. That algebra is S invariant. And now, for the first time, I can extend the action of uh, the action I'm having on the uh, OG to, to S itself. Uh, how will that displacement in my note? So I'm having that G act on the left here, and I'm having a commuting action uh, of S. By algebra. This G action came from the left multiplication by G. The S action came from the individual right multiplication by the NIs, or by the TIs. Um, okay, you act on an algebra, you act on a spectrum. Of course, G times S act on G itself. by left multiplication. S act in 
で組めてるのガンマ times s act here. ガンマ by left multiplication, s by right multiplication. G times s act here. G by left multiplication. Uh, and, and, and s by right. I'm having this phi. And now I got a map rho times, let me denote it, theta. So I got a map as, I mean, this action, that is I'm having a map as theta to G, right? The action of S on G by right multiplication is via some homomorphism into G, which is the group, this is the group of right multiplication of G. Uh, and this is for its theta. Now set, maybe this theta I should call it all up. And check that if we have this diagram, then all bar was taken to gamma is all. Step of dealing with function spaces, etc., appearing, appearing in the end, was just a way of gluing together pieces of invariancy we had, right? The theta i's. So once we we've been here, it was just this was the end game. We were already winning. winning. Okay. Uh, how did we get here? To get to G, we used uh, normality. We use that H was normal, and some of this appears out of this uh, discussion we had. Um, but after setting the formalism, let me emphasize this, after setting the formalism of a uh, by representation, what was non-trivial here is what we, we, we did yesterday, is getting started. This was something very transcendental that we applied. This was the use of amenability. It enabled us to get started, this category is not entirely trivial. We had something going on over there. This the amenability of, say, T1 that got us started. And, um, and it was weak mixing that enabled us to prove that term, that we have an initial object. Then we kind of continued by successive commutation which is some algebraic property. This is a property of higher rank group. This is why this term applies for higher rank groups and does not apply for rank one groups, or not, should not, not need to be applied for rank one groups. It does not apply for SL2R, for example. We have seen previously that SL2R has a free group as a lattice. It just has two, this free group, gamma, just has way too many homomorphisms and too many things. You cannot extend them all. Maps from S to G, as wrote down here, this is something, something very restrictive. Lead theory study those things. Uh, they are classified by highest weight, etc. You don't have so many. But, so there is a huge difference from, between higher rank and rank one, and this difference is emphasized or is manifested in this extra commutation that we have inside the higher rank groups. Okay, and, and now, uh, are there any questions about this last thing? Yes. And uh, I didn't get into really how you got this theta and the rest of G. You said that S acts on the right of G, 
Yes. So just let, let me stop it now. Act on the right on G means that you have a homomorphism from S to the group of right actions on G. Yes. And this group is G itself. Yes. This homomorphism is theta. So I, I, I change, I, I change my all these theta i's into, uh, I grew them into one theta, but I, I didn't do it, I didn't work with this device that i's at that, that point. I just observed the existence of this theta. Okay, so uh, that was a review of that last theorem, with many implications that we will not discuss now. I, I, I was, uh, when I was preparing, I thought I will discuss arithmeticity, etc. Uh, I will not do it. Maybe I will. I should say about the scope of the theorem. You can replace S in 3R by, by every higher rank simple group, and under some uh, assumption called irreducibility of gamma, with any higher rank semi-simple group, and you can replace G here with any algebraic group over any complete field. You don't really need uh, algebraically closed here. But then you have to work about constructability of uh, morphisms. Uh, if you don't want to do it, you want just to work about over algebraically closed complete fields of absolute values. If you are not C, then you, you need to, uh, to care about local compactness. Uh, I, I was using compactness of uh, projective space at some point. This is valid over C. If you, do, if you are not working over C, if you are not working over local fields, you need to, to add something here you know, to get some compactness. This can be done, uh, but uh, the most naive version is over the complex, and this is what we, we've done today. As, as I proved, you can replace G with every complex, complex simple algebraic group. Same rules. Same, same proof just works. Okay. And now this is about this class, which was the highlight of this course. So this is where I, I, I was hanging all the time, but of course I, I was explaining other things as well. And I want to give some overview and to do something that uh, I haven't done yet. And this, this is giving some references and, and, and some suggestions for, for further reading, if this is relevant for you. So, uh, Lectures, the first day, uh, and and this was extended in the ninth. I was uh, discussed maps from R two to R two, which commute with the lattice, and we had a, a very general version of it at, at the ninth uh, yesterday uh, of, the, of that very thing, which I, I did at the very first day, very explicitly, uh, without yet. Uh, discussing the things in general. Uh, so this is, uh, this appears, the material of this, appears in a, in a paper of myself, Alex Fuhrman, Alex Gorodnik, and Bart Weiss. Uh, I will not write the name because this uniquely defines the paper, but it's called uh, Rigidity Group Actions on homogeneous spaces, three. And uh, three because uh, the first one, uh, there is no one. The first one is an unpublished uh, result of uh, Shalom and Stiger, who proved exactly that exercise that they did in lecture one. And they use the theory of integrability of matrix coefficients, of some uh, unitary representations, some very, very heavy machine they had. Uh, very complicated, and it was very restrictive in that case. Later, Fuhrman uh, came and gave uh, another more robotic theoretical explanation of this phenomena, and the title as a joke was something too. Uh, and we understood it in a, in a greater extent, somehow together, and uh, we called it something, something three, uh, and published it. 
and um, I, I, I think it, it is quite readable. And um, and one more thing to remark is that the abstract of this paper uh, is made as a, a sonnet. So uh, we, we didn't publish it in this way because we didn't want it to be uh, rejected. So we changed the, the way the lines are made. I mean, it makes sense mathematically, but if you read the abstract, you should rearrange it uh, in your mind. Uh, this lecture. Uh, lecture two, uh, I was discussing generality about lattices. Uh, I, I was proving that uh, SLNZ is a lattice in SLNR using uh, uh, this nice uh, theorem by Minkowski. And, um, and later on, I, so here I was using, uh, I was using notes by Burger, Mark Burger, which I don't know if they are uh, online or anything. I don't know if it's published. If you want to read it, uh, please email me and I, I, I will give it to you. Uh, I think it's course notes, and he improved much more than just that, but this very nice uh, proof I was uh, uh, stealing from there, uh, probably this is uh, the same proof uh, given by uh, uh, Siegel, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, having discussed lattices, and of course we, in lecture one we were relying on these results, uh, the, in lecture three, uh, we were discussing uh, metric action or isometric action of semi simple groups. This was very crucial for us uh, in, in our later, later discussion of metric erudicity. We didn't coin that term yet at lecture three, but this was, uh, this was related to how more thing. And if you, and I was uh, taking in, in uh, uh, our discussion, I was using the recent uh, notes uh, we, we put in the archive with uh, Tzachi Gelader, called Every Continuous Action of uh, Semi-City Groups. So actually, of course, I was just remarking in class about Eki Continu use actions, but uh, we emphasize this in the note because it has uh, many implications. Uh, okay, letter five. Uh, sorry, four. In letter four, we discuss metabolism. So we, we put this, well, this result in context. Uh, metric um, So uh, this notion appeared with, uh, in my work with uh, Alex Fuhrman. Uh, uh, so with Alex, we have this uh, recent uh, note for uh, ICM proceeding called boundary rigidity representation and the of exponents, and. Uh, and it appears there, uh, it appears before in some, in some notes uh, that we were using. It is uh, discussed, this notion uh, also discussed in the in a paper by Benji Weiss, Benjamin Weiss and Eli Glasner. They, they studied generality of methodology. And it is built on uh, the, the notion of ergodicity with whatever coefficients. It's built on the uh, study of uh, Borger Monon, part of the study of, uh, of boundary cohomology. They used ergodicity with unitary coefficients. And, uh, and also, uh, some nice term here. With respect to Poisson uh, boundaries, well, uh, studied by Kaimanovic. So all these are relevant references. Uh, uh, if, if you want to study this further, uh, lecture five was generality about the body. 
So this is on the, on the one hand is very standard and very available. On the on, on the on the second hand, uh, not entirely in, in, in the form that uh, I was presenting. Uh, so text that you uh, classical text that you can uh, study this kind of thing in, in a closest in a, in a close form to what I was discussing is Zimmer's book, which I already gave a reference to, a Gothic theory and semi simple groups. And there are a work uh, paper by Vardarajan and uh, by Mackey uh, about the structure of Lebesgue spaces, etc., 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 and compact models of Lebesgue spaces. Um, recently, uh, this does not appear, so I will not write it down, but I think somehow the discussion we have uh, is not satisfactory in, in the literature. Uh, because this is so fundamental, so we can't find any, everything in advanced paper, but not in the form that uh, is easy to grasp. Uh, and I uh, ask uh, a master student of mine, Alon Lessel, uh, he writes something, and I hope this will be uh, available at some point. Uh, exactly about those things, a compact model, etc. that I was presenting in class. Uh, Okay, I, I want to proceed first. Uh, we are nearing the end, you see. So six and seven, well, this was algebraic geometry and uh, in view into alge algebraic book theory. And of course, you have the classical books by Borel and Humphreys. Also, a book by Springer, but, but I, I didn't read it, so I don't know. I uh, probably should be recommended as well. Um, but in particular, so everything I did is here. But if you are interested in constructability, the notion of constructible action, for example, appears in an appendix of a paper by uh, Bernstein. Maybe a bit before this is where I uh, first noticed this about uh, uh, unitary, not constitutive of sex, constitutive of actions. Which, of course, is natural to, be, to define, but it, is, it appears as such and, and discussed uh, for the first time, I think, in, in, the, in the appendix of a survey paper by Vincent Zelevinsky about unitary representations of. Uh, what they call L groups. Groups of total, uh, total disconnected groups. I mean, periodic groups, etc. And they put some theorems. Uh, if you want more, uh, there is some in, uh, in the Platonov and Rappenschuk book. And uh, Serre's book, uh, I recommend. Big groups and real algebra. Develop the theory of uh, Lee groups over a valid field, complete valid field, and uh, it gives a very nice survey of uh, analytic geometry over valid field, which is what you need in order to prove the inverse function theorem in that generality, which is what is needed uh, to move from algebraic closed field to, uh, to complete fields in general and improve uh, the constructability of actions. Uh, if you are interested in the SCP, you're not, but if you, uh, then uh, there is a recent paper doing it, uh, uh, which I can't remember. It's by, I think it's by two Vietnamese. Uh, but also, these guys, did the SCP, they just claim they did it only for the local, locally local case, but what they do is general. Uh, okay. Eighth lecture. Uh, here, uh, this was measures of brightness. So th this was study. I mean, maybe the first appearance of it. Uh, well, maybe it, it is very, very classical in some sense. But uh, in the sense that we were studying, there is the Borel density theorem, density of lattices. And, uh, and there is Firstenberg, uh, 
uh, a paper, I don't remember which, in which he proves uh, Fürstenberg's lemma. I didn't use that particular one in, in my notes, but this is the classical approach, and this is uh, in Zeno's book. Uh, Zeno discusses things over uh, local, local fields and um, uses a Borel cell, a fine piece of homology uh, while doing it, and uh, it, or using a least understanding of the reefs. Um, but actually, it's more general than that, and the discussion this is not discussion we had. Discussion we had is, is not in print yet, but it will, it will be soon. Uh, it is by paper we write with uh, Bruno Duchamp and John Uh Smoothness of algebraic action, etc., etc., etc. Coming soon. And uh, we proved more than we discussed in this class. We proved also not only that the stabilizer are algebraic by compact, and this is without assuming that the, the fields are local. Uh, but also that the, the action of the group, of an algebraic group on the space of measures on a variety, is always the same. Uh, I think I think it's a really nice paper. And uh, the two last lectures, lecture nine and ten, uh, are uh, modeled on, on my, my recent work is Alex Fuhrman. Uh, called algebraic representations and super agility. Uh, of course, the theorems, the theorem is Dr. Uh, Bakulis, and there is a classical paper that everyone should read uh, from cover to cover, but no one can, uh, by Margulis. Uh, but everyone should read chapter zero. This is a wonderful summary of the uh, algebraic of, of, of a local field. Uh, uh, so the, there is this wonderful book by Margulis, and there is a wonderful also book by Zimmer, proving essentially uh, uh, some uh, same things in a way one can understand. And, um, and uh, so the terms are there. We, we, we extend it slightly, of course not in these talks, but uh, if you want some extensions, it is here. But uh, this, the way uh, it is, I was presenting it in the last two lectures is in that way. And uh, lastly, uh, I want to thank you for uh, being here and ask very good questions. And, uh, it, it was a real pleasure.